We all know New York skyline and their drive to go super tall and super slender. I'll be going through 53rd West 53rd Street, the engineering behind it and how it's actually won the engineer's news record of the year's project for 2020. It's quite a magnificent structure and it's had to combine both engineering and architecture to produce the slenderness and the height that's actually achieved. What makes a super slender tower? Well, this is really anything over one to 10. And New York has become home to a range of these. With the first starting at 110, which is 30 Park Place. And then we're moving on 53rd West 53rd Street at 1 to 13. Then we move on to a 423 Park Avenue at a slenderness ratio of 1 to 15. And it really looks like a pencil in the sky. And then move on to the most slenderest tower in the world with a ratio of 1 to 20. And that is 111 West 53rd Street. All these towers are just a stone throw away from Billionaire's Row. And most of them have magnificent sight over Central Park in New York. The reason why they're going super tall and super slender, it really comes hard to find a site that they actually build up on. And the demand for these towers is significant with some of these apartments going upwards of $70 million. And generally the smaller ones, even ranging up there, starting at around 14 million. So the price of these apartments are not cheap. So you can see the demand for this type of tower, building tall is unique to New York due to the prices that people are willing to pay with the scarcity of product that we can actually get out there. Building these towers in New York is not just an architecture, structural engineering problem, but it also has a planning permit problem as well. As New York does not want their places to be overdeveloped, we've actually limited the height structures can have. However, to overcome this, what other buildings can do, they can purchase air rights from around them and essentially stack them on top of each other to increase the height that they can develop to. This does a number of different things. It essentially prevents the local towers from being built out. So you can build their tower high and still get good sites from all around. But it also means that New York will not be overdeveloped, which is what they're actually concerned about. This is a unique feature of New York and makes it hard to plan these giant towers as not only do you have to find a block, but you also need to be able to buy those air rights of the adjacent properties to allow you to build to the height that you need to. To allow them to achieve the heights they needed to at the slenderness ratio, the main stability system of 53rd West 53rd Street is a diagrid system. So what's unique to a diagrid system? Essentially it wraps the whole outer facade to be part of the stability system. And through its zigzagging shapes, it allows forces to flow through the structure. So instead of forces coming in and bending and trying to turn around corners, as typical with most columns, you essentially have these zigzagging columns as you go down the structure. So it allows forces to flow through in either compression or tension, making it a really stiff element. And as it is the outer skin, it has the biggest lever arm possible to stabilize our structure as well. As you can see here, I've highlighted some of the diagrid elements in 53 West 53rd Street, and it's see it's really integrated into part of the facade of the structure. The structures essentially combine both engineering and architecture to create a masterpiece. And these can be seen in many of the features around the world and are generally expressed in the outer facade of the structure. So if you're looking at the skyline and you can see the zigzagging shapes of the tower as you go up, you can see that they are actually more likely to be a diagrid as actually expressed on the outside of the structure. And these are both unique not just in New York, but around the world. And are some of the most iconic buildings that we can see here today. Something is also unique to this tower was when they were first modeling it out, they realized that these zigzagging columns required a lot of reinforcement due to its height and its slenderness ratio. It needed a lot of structure to stabilize our building. I was actually leading to congestion problems. So what they did over a number of months was essentially put BIM models together, essentially modeling the structure in 3D to see where the reinforcement would go to make sure they're actually able to construct it and actually pour the concrete without honeycombing occurring. Although they were able to make it work, they were realizing that the nose of the structure, essentially where all the zigzags were coming in, were really congested. So what they came up with was essentially these steel nodes where they're about to drop them down into place and allow them to set out the reinforcement quite precisely and stop the heavy congestion in these locations. These were later nicknamed the glove as it would essentially be put down and essentially set up the jump forms for each location beyond that. So as we can see, it both eliminated some of the congestion in these locations, made it easy to build and set out that reinforcement and also allowed the structure to be built quicker as these nodes would have been heavy on site time to be able to put the reinforcement locally. These were further refined by steel fabricators later on to create the most efficient structure possible in these locations. Despite the rigidity of this structure, 
During wind tunnel testing, it was found that it was subject to the vibrations of the structure. So when people inside the top of the tower, they'd feel the tower could walk backwards and forwards. So to be able to overcome this, essentially they needed to place a tune mass damper in the structure. So what does a tune mass damper do? As I discussed earlier, it sort of stops the vibration of the tower. But how does it actually do this? It does this through the laws of momentum. So when the tower moves one way, essentially the tune mass damper lags behind, essentially pushing back the centroid of the structure. So it allows them to move, stop the sway greatly, and it stops that sway and that critical vibration. So when people are at the top of the tower, they don't really feel it. As if you were at the top of the tower and didn't have that tune mass damper in it, it feels like someone is on a boat, walking backwards and forwards. So if you've spent $70 million on your tower, you don't want to all constantly getting seasick at the top of the structure when a light wind blows. So through the laws of momentum and equilibrium, they're able to put these tune mass dampers in that essentially balance out the loads and slow down this oscillation to make it livable and make it feel like an actual structure and so you can't really perceive the vibrations that are going in there. Of course, there is still some movement and it can be some quite big sway, but provided it's moving slow enough, you don't actually feel those vibrations. And this is where the tune mass damper comes in to its own to really solve these problems. 53rd West 53rd Street is a masterpiece on the New York skyline and especially how it integrates with the Museum of Modern Art and just some of the reasons behind why it won ENR's Project of the Year. And I've just covered some of the brief details of the engineering behind some of these super tall, super slender towers. The taller and slender they go, the more complex engineering is required to design them. So if you do want me to cover in more detail some of the engineering topics behind designing these super tall towers, please comment below. And if you have made it to this point, please smash that like button as it does help me out and helps to get out to more people. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell to get all updates. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.